Have you ever been in a situation where you thought of something and the person you were with immediately knew what you were thinking without even speaking? Well, if you have, you're certainly not the first person to wonder about this. Hans Berger, an early 20th century physician, became obsessed with this phenomenon, and he dedicated his life to proving his theory of telepathy, and in doing so, inadvertently produced one of the most important neurotechnologies that's still widely used today. In this video, I'll tell you about the fascinating story of his life and his search to prove that telepathy is real. In 1893, Hans Berger was a cavalryman in the German army. One day, during training, his horse suddenly reared, throwing him into the mud. As he lifted his head, he found himself staring down the barrel of a fast-approaching cannon, and his life flashed before his eyes. Fortunately, the driver of the artillery battery stopped the horses in time, leaving Berger without any serious injuries, but understandably shaken. At the same time, his sister, many kilometers away at home, had this sickening feeling that Hans was in danger, and she asked her father to telegram for him. This was the first time that they'd sent him a telegram since he was deployed. How could this have happened, Hans thought. It just couldn't be mere coincidence that his sibling would feel such concern for him on the same day he had a near-death experience. His interpretation of what must have happened was that there just must have been some sort of mental connection between him and his sister. This experience convinced Berger that telepathy was real, and it left such an impression on him that even almost 50 years later, in 1940, he wrote, It was a case of spontaneous telepathy, in which at a time of mortal danger, and as I contemplated certain death, I transmitted my thoughts, while my sister, who was particularly close to me, acted as the receiver. This incident caused Berger to become fascinated with the brain. So much so, that after he completed his military service, and because he became obsessed with the question of how his mind could have carried a signal to his sister, he decided to return to university, eventually completing his medical degree. His goal? Discover the physiological basis of psychic energy, or as he described it, to search for the correlation between objective activity in the brain and subjective psychic phenomena. In other words, he set out to prove that telepathy was real. Although this view sounds kind of outlandish by today's standards, the idea of telepathic communication didn't sound as out there in the early 1900s. As science was progressing at the time and technological advances like the radio became more common, one might have thought that if wireless information can be transmitted in this way, why couldn't thoughts also travel in the same manner? So Berger started on his search for something measurable regarding psychic conditions. Berger thought that during times when the brain had an excess of available energy, that the extra neural energy that couldn't be converted into heat or electricity was instead converted into psychic energy to support feelings and thoughts. Since he wanted to characterize the brain's energy, he looked at the supply of that energy, cerebral blood flow, so that he could gain a better understanding of the transformation into heat electricity and mental phenomena. Although he did successfully manage to record pulses of intracranial blood flow, this data still disappointed him because it didn't offer any new support of his telepathic theory. He concluded that analyzing physical energy using only temperature wouldn't bring him any closer to understanding the mental activity without some sort of understanding of the electricity produced in the brain. At the time, psychiatrists had been experimenting with direct electrical stimulation of the brain to treat some psychiatric conditions. The procedure involved sending low-intensity electricity through electrodes placed on the patient's scalps, which affected brain activity. This usually had a numbing effect. This practice, in different forms, is actually still used today. Berger himself had experimented with direct electrical stimulation. He wondered if he could reverse this technology so that instead of pumping electricity into the brain, he could pulse them out. Berger connected electrodes on his patient's heads to a galvanometer, the same technology used to detect heart rate. When he turned his invention on, it scribbled across the paper, indicating to him that he was detecting brain activity. Because the signals were so crude, it was difficult for him to initially pull any insight from them. But he kept refining his technique, improving on his recording equipment, and eventually increased the quality of EEG recordings, where they started to form distinct patterns of electrical activity. He called these waveforms that would vary depending on the state of the subject. Throughout his experiments, Berger started to notice some general trends in people's brainwaves. For example, when they were relaxed or had their eyes closed, he noticed that the wave amplitude was larger, but the frequency was lower. He called these alpha waves. On the flip side, when they began concentrating and their eyes were open, the wave amplitude was lower and the frequency was much higher. 
He called these signals beta waves. He noticed that this was true across subjects, allowing him to classify their general brain states just by observing these wave patterns. Though Berger initially did believe that these signals were what was being transmitted to support his telepathic ability, he later admitted that they were simply too small to transmit over long distances, noting an exponential decay in the signal the further you moved away from the brain. Despite him reproducing these experiments across different people, Berger was filled with so much doubt that it took him five years to publish his first paper on the electroencephalogram of man in 1929. This paper demonstrated the technique for recording electrical activity of the human brain from the surface of the head. In this, Berger still expressed his belief in telepathy, but admitted that he couldn't prove it. Unfortunately, like many scientists who make seminal discoveries, their work often isn't fully appreciated at the time of the discovery. And to add to this, his findings were also met with ridicule and disbelief by many of his peers. Not too long after Berger published his paper, he was forced out of his research position at the University of Jena in Germany, and he had to settle for running a nursing home. Because of all of this, he sank into a deep depression and eventually took his life in 1941. It wasn't until 1935 when he finally started to gain some international recognition for his work, after other groups independently confirmed his findings. And by 1938, EEG became widespread throughout the field, eventually leading to its practical use in diagnosing things like epilepsy, and to characterize the effects of different drugs. Despite his tragic death, his legacy lives on. Berger's discoveries showed scientists that neural data could be collected in the form of electrical signals, and that those signals could provide insights into the inner workings of the brain. EEG is now widely used in research and medicine, and has spawned many other biosensing technologies. Although the technologies have been greatly improved since Berger's time, the underlying principles remain the same. Although we're pretty confident that natural telepathy isn't real, ironically, Berger's EEG may have laid the foundation for artificial telepathy. Brain-computer interface scientists of today, using variations of Berger's techniques, are experimenting with brain-to-brain -brain interfaces that could enable communication between brains. Thanks for watching and learning about how one man's life goal to prove that telepathy was real led to the discovery of EEG. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more fascinating content.